الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم ما بعد الامام النووي رحمه الله تعالى يقول في كتاب الادب من رياض الصالحين The Book of Good Manners from رياض الصالحين chapter باب اكرام الضيف honoring the guest and honoring the guest if someone comes to you as a guest are you obligated to uh, to offer hospitality or not a jama'a yes. what's the hukum of offering hospitality for a guest is it just a recommendation you should, yeah, it's, it's up to you or is it obligatory ya jama'a so why if you if you believe it's obligatory why don't you uh, يعني uh, invite us to your house. What's the hukum on honoring the guest? That's number one. Second, what level, to what degree could you say that you've done your part in honoring the guest? That's what Imam al Nawr rahimahullah ta'ala will be explaining in this, uh, in this actual hadith in this chapter. قال الله تعالى هل أتاك حديث ضيف إبراهيم المكرمين إذ دخلوا عليه فقالوا سلاما قال سلام قوم منكرون فراغ إلى أهله فجاء بعجل سمين فقربه إليهم قال ألا تأكلون سبحان this ayah the story of Ibrahim عليه السلام with the three angels when they came on the way to destroy قوم لوط صلى الله عليه وسلم so they stopped by his house and they came in the form of human beings very handsome beautiful you know three young men Ibrahim عليه السلام as Allah سبحانه وتعالى says here has the story reached you of the honor, of the honored guest the angels uh, along um, of Ibrahim when they came when they came in to him and said salam alayhi salam alaykum that's basically <coughs> they will talk about strangers <coughs> strangers they come to you saying assalamu alaykum what do you tell them <laughs> who are you he said wa alaykum assalam subhanallah the beginning the, this is one of the beautiful things about Islam and Muslims you always start with salam to break the ice Right away. Once you say salam, you feel comfortable. Remember the last time you were in the airport, we were traveling somewhere, you felt kind of out of place. Suddenly someone passed by saying salam alaikum. You say, Ya Allah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> it could be even non-Muslim. It's just saying salam, it makes you feel comfortable. So that's like an icebreaker over here, saying salam. And again, since they just started with salam, they're guests now. Khalas. He's now in, in title, they're entitled to hospitality. And he feels in debt to them because they began with the salam. Qala salamun qawmun munkarun. Why do we know that they were strangers? Because he said, he said, he responded, he answered salam and said, You are people unknown to me. Means you're strangers. You must be strangers. So that if they're strangers, what does that mean, Jama? They needed help, right? Usually, when you have, specifically back then, when, when the cities were small and towns were small, villages were smaller than that. So anyone who's in you, you can tell right away. So it says, you seem to be not from this area. It means, come away, let me feed you something. Because most likely they will be hungry on the road, travelers, so they might need our help. فَقَالَ سَسَلَامُ الْقَوْمُ مُنْكَرُونَ He said, come on in for hospitality. فَرَاغَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ فَجَاءَ بِعِجْلِ سَمِينَ He went straight to his family. Allah subhanahu wa says, and he said, you are people unknown to me. Then he turned to his household and brought out a roasted calf. Can you imagine? Three people, plus Ibrahim alayhi salam, and he goes and he, and he slaughters a whole cow for them. A whole cow. Not just a whole cow, a jama'ah, roasted cow. You know what does that mean? How much time would it take to do that, to offer it? It means that this whole entire time, as he was with them, he was just offering a hospitality for the guests, the food was not yet there, and it's just there entertaining the guests. One thing so subhanAllah, so strange about the story you will see and soon. Throughout this whole period, as they were preparing the food, he even never asked them about their names. Because that's, that's kind of culture. These people basically, in the Arab culture particularly, they used in the past, when guests come in, they never asked about their names. It's Bismillah Kul. So the hospitality is completely objective. It's not because you're from the tribe from our enemies. Sometimes they would feed their enemies. They would feed their enemies and sometimes know that they are their enemies. But because when it comes to hospitality, that's above that level. It is offered regardless. 
So Ibrahim alayhi salam, he offered them now a whole cow. From this, we ask the question, how much hospitality should you offer a jama'ah? These days when, you, when people invite you over, what, do you, what is your expectation for the food? Five portions. At least, right? <laughs> At least. <laughs> that does, we don't come with the appetizers and the, and the salads and the sweets and the fruit and all that stuff. That's not even coming now. Exactly. Uh, that's also, you, you even, you, you tell them to bring something with them too. <laughs> so usually when you go, when you're invited to people's house, you expect something huge. That's what you expect. Although it shouldn't be to that level, you know. Al-Jood min al In the Arabic language we say Al-Jood min al which means hospitality is from that which is available. Whatever is available, that's what your hospitality is. You don't have to, to overburden yourself just for the sake of inviting people. One of the biggest problems we have in the Muslim community these days, people <coughs> don't invite each other because of what? Well, that's the thing. You know, if I'm inviting people over, it's going to be a lot of... Uh, uh, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> I'm getting angry now. <laughs> I need to lay down. Yeah. <laughs> so eventually, as you see, the, the, the problem with the Muslim community now, these social gatherings are no longer they are no longer just for the sake of getting together and just enjoying the time together. So you, there's so much stress on the family just to provide the best hospitality. So therefore, when someone invites you, you will say, thank you very much, I don't want to come. Why? Because you feel indebted to them that you're going to have to invite them over. And if, you, if they do something to you, you're going to have to do something similar or outdo it. You can't, do, you can't underdo that. So eventually this keeps escalating, escalating until you reach the level of inflation no one can afford anymore. So eventually the best, the best way of hospitality these days is just, you know what? Forget it. You don't have to invite anybody, you don't have to accept anyone's invitation. Uh, please make it simple and easy. Ibrahim السلام, he was able to afford one cow, Alhamdulillah, if you can afford one cow, Bismillah. Provided you don't throw anything away. Whatever food that you provide for hospitality, you do it and you keep and you, the rest of it, you divide that and give it, you know, to other people. Or, mashallah, you have food for the next, for the next uh, two weeks and at home. Uh, regardless, you don't throw anything. You are allowed to offer a lot, but whatever you offer, you make sure you don't throw, you don't throw away anything. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, uh, he, he offered this whole cow. Then, qala, فَقَرَّبَهُ إِلَيْهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ibrahim, what he did, he, uh, he placed it before them. In the Arabic language, not just before them, فَقَرَّبَهُ, which means like he pushed it towards them. It's not like these days, the style these days, the food is actually is uh, open buffet, right? Which means you put it on the table. That's our style these days. It's halal, I'm not saying it's haram anymore. So basically, the food is there, and you tell the guest, Bismillah, you go and uh, you know, serve yourself. Now Ibrahim السلام, didn't want to burden the guest to walk in to get the food with himself. Instead, he brought the whole cow to them. And he pushed it towards them, not towards himself, no, them first, the guest. The thing is, he didn't see their hands reaching the food. When he saw their hands not reaching the food, he uh, kind of got worried, a little bit anxious. Obviously, he felt kind of uncomfortable. But then they told him who they were. So that means the entire time that he was entertaining the guests until the food was ready, he didn't even know that he was talking to angels. He says, listen, don't worry, we are also Rabbi. We are angels, we don't eat. And in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَقَرَّبُهُ عَلَيْهِمْ قَالَ أَلَا تَأْكُلُونَ Bismillah, go ahead. He's just giving them the permission, to release the permission to eat. And when you say, when you, when you tell the guest, go ahead, Bismillah, and eat, there is no limitation. You know what does that mean, Ajima? It means you try that over yourself, just give it to some other people. No, you don't put limitation on the guest. Once you open now the per to give the permission to eat, they have the right to eat from anything that is available for them that you offer. Uh, these days, you know, you just offer one plate and take it away. Khalas, your turn is over, right? <laughs> uh, these are different styles, different traditions. Again, it's not that it's haram. Hospitality actually I mean, is offered in different cultures, different ways. 
as long as you do, you do uh, the hak of the guest to be entertained in terms of food, in terms of uh, uh, feeling comfortable, not being you know, restrained, in terms of you enjoying this time with the host and so forth, that would be fine. Another thing which is the most, one, one very important actually thing is uh, uh, conversation. It seems that around the food, people don't, you know, يعني, uh, well, it depends again on the culture, don't converse very much يعني, because they're too busy right now in something more important, right? So as they eat, they don't like to converse. We can talk about this later when we have the shy, inshallah. They just now enjoy the meal. Actually, part of enjoying the meal itself is the conversation. In some other cultures, they say there's, it's not an etiquette to speak while you're, while, you, uh, while you're eating. Well, it's not an etiquette to speak while you're chewing the food. That's true. But to speak around, of course, you know, the food and around meal, it's all right. There's nothing wrong with it. Even the Prophet would do that. Like in the very famous hadith of uh, Shafa'a, a long hadith about the journey of the hereafter, the Prophet وسلم, he was eating when he gave us hadith. He had the meat in his hand, he took a bite. Then he started speaking. وسلم, I'm the master of the children of Adam, and I'd say this out of pride. And he gave the long story of the Shafa'a at intercession on the day of judgment. So from this, I will learn that the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and that's why the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh, he uh, spoke highly of Ibrahim alayhi salam as being the most generous. He was one of the most generous people you can think of. It was reported about Ibrahim alayhi salam that he never ate alone. Ibrahim he would never eat alone alayhi salatu wasalam. If he doesn't find guests, he will walk out of the door with somebody walking on the street. Anybody. Anyone who passes by, salam alaikum, come over here, I have some food for you. Anyway, today you have one sandwich, you don't share it, right? Remember the good old days when you guys were younger and you used to share sandwich with each other? Have a bite here, have a bite there. Today it's all hygienic things and, you know, uh, diseases and all, so just keep these things away from, uh, from us. Uh, again, these are all cultural practices. Hospitality is, is wajib. The Prophet وسلم, he spoke of the hospitality for the guest. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم حق المسلم على المسلم mentioned the five حقوق the rights of Muslims of one of the Muslims one of these one of these حقوق is actually إكرام الضيف that you also you uh, uh, honor the guest and he said صلى الله عليه وسلم that when you, when you receive a guest when you receive a guest صلى الله وسلم عليه says the first the first uh, uh, yeah, the, 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 the best the best hospitality is the one that is offered in the first day which means if you have a guest who will be staying more than one day, uh, then the first hospitality should be actually the first day. That's what the Prophet called Jaizatahu, Faliyotihi Jaizatahu. And you offer his, his prize, the best. And then next day you can feed him from the leftover from yesterday. The third day you feed him something else, and after that you're not obligated to give anyone. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> after that, after that you have the right to tell him, Jazakallah khair, we're done. Uh, of course, that's on the uh, we, we, assuming that because of the kind of lifestyle they had back then, people always on the road traveling between this, the different destination villages and tribes. So that's how actually they do it. They need to, uh, they need to stay somewhere. Not, they didn't have hotels back then, so in this case they would stay in other people's houses. Wallahu ta'ala. Any question, anyone? Hospitality rooms also stay for the Hospitality rules does, does it apply to the in-laws? <laughs> it's a life saver, yeah. <laughs> they have to. Especially in the worst. Right? Nah. <laughs> yes. I uh, just wanted to comment, Sheikh, about uh, Salaamu Alaikum, how uh, it is an icebreaker. I uh, truly experienced that uh, firsthand. I traveled the state when I used to uh, be a salesman. Nah. And I visited a lot of convenience stores and gas stations, which is owned by a lot of brothers, you know, Muslims nah. from all over. Yeah. And uh, it was interesting when I walk in, once they, we find out that we are Muslims, we say, Assalamu Alaikum. Some of them, after five minutes, they, they trusted me with the store. They say, can I go to the bathroom? Excuse me, can you watch the, you know, the store for me? And they would walk away, <coughs> seriously. Uh, leave me behind the register for them. And this is uh, the guy that I just met for five minutes. Subhan. Uh, Subhanallah, it was. I mean, uh, it's so calming when you see somebody and you say, Assalamu Alaikum, you feel like you're at peace. I had Subhan, this is the same encounter just this past weekend. Yeah. Uh, when I first arrived in New Jersey, so we stopped by a gas station, same thing. 
So as we were stopping there, buying something, you can tell that the person on the other side is actually looks, he looked Muslim. So the moment he saw me, immediately he looks at me, he goes, Salaam Alaikum. I said, Wa Alaikum Assalam Wa Rahmatullah. And SubhanAllah, you start a conversation just like you said, as if you know the person for ages already. Yeah. I've never seen him in my life. I don't even know if I'm going to ever see him again in my life. And when I arrived here at the airport, I went actually to get a cup of coffee from uh, uh, one of the coffee shops there at the airport. The lady behind the cash, she also looked Muslim. Even though she was wearing hijab, I can tell that she looked Muslim. SubhanAllah, so uh, I just intentionally said, Salaam Alaikum. So the moment you said salam alaikum, she had that big smile on her face, which means alhamdulillah, at least someone recognized that I'm Muslim. But these are icebreakers. And that's why the Prophet says, uh, uh, he said salawatullah salam, that one of the ways of you know, spreading peace and love amongst you, he says, Qala, ala adullukum ala ila Shall I guide you to do something that if you do it among yourself, you would love one another? He said, Afshu salam abaynakum, spread salam amongst you. And subhanAllah, that's exactly what it is. It's an iceberg. Nah, Allah. Yes. That's the first one. Yeah, the first one is I heard that even before the, uh, uh, during the Japanese uh, time, uh -huh. the people in Arab, uh, they are not a good people, but they still they are in the uh, The question is regarding the Arab predating Islam in the Jahili. Even though they were not Muslims and didn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they believed in, in idols and statues and so on, but they were very good people when it comes to hospitality. Is that true? The answer is absolutely. As a matter of fact, if you read the Arabic uh, tradition and culture, uh, from the poetry, from the, the folklore, the stories of the Bedouins before Islam, these people actually they have the pure culture of hospitality. The reason they became the most hospitable people, you know why? Because of the harsh environment they lived in. They lived in desert. And desert means scarcity of everything. Food, water, shade, rest, comfort. All of this doesn't exist when you're traveling for the Arabs. So therefore, if anyone, if anyone wanted to keep for themselves a legacy, or they wanted to keep for themselves an honor or name after they die, they were racing and competing to be the most hospitable. And that's when people pass by, there is something called in the Arabic language, uh, there's a proverb said that this person, his fire never actually, is never yani, extinguished, never just sets off. What's the meaning of that? Because at night, these Bedouins who live in the desert, they used to light fire, campfires around their tents. Why is that? To guide people who are traveling in the desert to come over means just to, if you need any help, if you need water, if you need food, if you need shelter, we have it for you. They also, there's another proverb in the Arabic language, they said, Fulanun Jabanul Kalb. This person, his dog is too coward. Why is that? The dog is usually, when it sees a stranger, what does it do? Start barking, right? But if it gets used to uh, uh, yani commuters and people and so on, what if it becomes used to that. So therefore it doesn't bark. So they say, his dog is too coward to bark, why? It got, used, it got used to the uh, to the crowd, to the people, because of their hospitality. Also, they say they say Fulan Rafi al Aman, meaning his Rafi al Aman. That means the post and the pillar. I don't know what they call it actually. Of the tent, the main post in the tent is so high, and when you have the pillar or the post of the tent is so high, just like the mast of the ship, that means the tent itself expands larger, actually bigger. So they say that it's very huge because it always receives guests and he needs, he needs to have room for that. So yeah, indeed, for them it's actually, it's, it was a big honor to, uh, uh, to, uh, yeah, to honor the guests. Uh, until today, honestly, until today, when you go to the original Arab yeah, societies over there, the indigenous Arab communities until this day were not influenced by, unfortunately, yeah, any different foreign cultures, you will see the same thing. They're very hospitable. They're willing to kill and all their uh, all their animals just to feed you, because for them it's a great honor to honor guests, regardless who you are. Now, I'll be part of that. Any question, Imam? Yes. And by the way, we actually salam the the other prophets. Yeah. 
uh, when you say salam, is that the same tradition of the other prophets before Islam, before Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? I would say very much yes, because even in Judaism right now, in Hebrew, in Hebrew language, how do they greet each other in Jamaah? Shalom alaykum, which is exactly salam alaykum, but it's just in their pronunciation. Aramaic is another Semitic language, which was the language of Isa alayhi salam. So it's similar to Hebrew, has a connection to the Arabic language, and uh, it would be the same thing. It would be similar to that pronunciation. Isa alayhi salam, when he was allegedly on the cross, what was he saying? It's the only phrase in the Bible, in the English Bible, that is mentioned in Aramaic. When he was on the, uh, allegedly again on the cross, uh, he was saying, uh, Eli, Eli, lema shabaktani, which sounds in the Arabic language like this, Ilahi, Ilahi, lima taraktani. Sounds exactly the same. It means, my, my Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? So uh, the pronunciation would be similar. Did they have the same pronunciation of salam? Not necessarily the exact pronunciation, but exact concept of spreading peace. Allah. Your second question. <laughs> Some guests, huh? <laughs> yeah. Basically, if the guest, if the guest is taking advantage of the host, uh, do you uh, still have the obligation to uh, honor the guest? Well, I definitely. I mean, uh, the honoring the guest is when the guest is actually uh, is most abusive. Yeah. Because if the guest is good, you're not going to be any different from other people, right? Everybody will uh, feed and honor the, the good guest. But when you feed and honor the bad guest, that's when you become the most hospitable. However, if this person is going to be actually too much, then in this case, you have no, you have, you have the right to object to it. Put more spice in the food. Khalas, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Make the food extremely spicy and they won't eat anything. Allah, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>